For this, you'll need some strips of paper like these, some colored pencils, scissors, and tape. Place two separate dots of one color on one side of the paper, and one dot of another color on the other side of the paper. How did you know that these two red dots are on the same side? How do you know the red dots are on a different side from the green dot? One way to define if two points are on the same side is to draw a line from one dot to the other. If we can do so without crossing an edge, then they are on the same side. If we must cross an edge to connect them, then they are on different sides of the paper. If we want to shade in one side of the paper with one color, like red, we connect all the points, but we can't cross an edge. Any points we can't reach are on the other side, and so we have to use another color to shade in the second side. Now we are going to tape one end of this strip of paper to the other making a ring. When we tape two ends together, we are sealing them so that there is no longer an edge here. There are only edges on the sides. After you do this, shade in one side with one color and then shade in the other side with a different color. Let's do this again, except this time, before you tape the ends together, take the edge and flip it upside down, in effect giving a half twist to the ring. After you have done this, tape the edges together and again, color in one side with one color and the other side with a different color. What's happening here? You colored in the front, but that was everything. This piece of paper has a front, but no back. How could that be? If we had a regular piece of paper and said, it only has a front, you might think that was crazy. But here it is. By putting that half twist in the paper, we made it have only one side. If you've read the book Flatland, you'll remember that it was a two-dimensional world. It had length and width, but no thickness. It was hard to imagine exactly what that would be like. How could it have no thickness? If we imagine a piece of paper that is very, very thin, this means the thickness is less and less, and then the front and the back would be closer and closer together. If it were infinitely thin, like in Flatland, the front and back would be the same. There wouldn't be a front and back, there would only be a front. In a way, this is what we have done here. We took away one of the dimensions. This has thickness and a front, but no back. This object is called a Mobius strip, named after the 19th century German mathematician August Ferdinand Mobius. The Mobius strip has many other interesting properties. Let's look at a few more of them. First, we're going to take our original ring and cut it down the center, the long way. What will the result be? Now what if we do the same for the Mobius strip? What will the result be? Go ahead and pause the video and try the experiment for yourself. What do we have here? 
we have one longer strip. Is it a Mobius strip? No, since it actually has two full twists. What will happen if we take this new object and cut it down the center again? I'll let you try that on your own. For this next one, you will need to have a partner. Make both a ring and a Mobius strip. When you're done, you're going to tape them together like this. Make sure you use lots of tape so they don't come apart. Now, you're going to cut each of them down the middle. Where they intersect, you're going to have to cut in both directions. To do this, cut both the ring and the Mobius strip first completely, except here where they intersect. When you are done, have your partner hold the intersection still while you complete the Mobius strip. And then hold it so you can completely cut the ring. When this is all done, what do you think the results will be? Go ahead and try. Here are some other things to try. Instead of one half twist, what if we put in two half twists? Or one full twist? How many sides does this have? What'll happen if we cut that down the center? What if we put in three twists? Or more twists? What if instead of cutting a Mobius strip down the center, we start cutting off center, like at the one third mark? What happens if we then do it again? You can continue to cut the Mobius strip in half again and again and document your results. What if instead of a Mobius strip attached to a ring, we did a ring to a ring, or a Mobius strip to a Mobius strip, or three of something together? There was a great video made in 1995 called The Shape of Space by Jeffrey Weeks. It explains what it would be like to live on a surface that feels flat, but is actually a cylinder, a torus, or other shapes. I'll put a link in the description for this video, and for games you can play, like tic-tac-toe, word searches, and chess on a Mobius strip, or even in three dimensions, like on this Klein bottle. The Klein bottle is like a 3D Mobius strip, and you can do more research on that as well. Have fun exploring!